Hey, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a new mid-range power station from Acevolt called the Camp Hour 700. It's got a couple cool features and it's got a kind of a unique form factor. Is it something you should consider? Let's find out. Five or six months ago, I did a review on a product called the Camp Hour 2000. And that was a much larger power station, also from Acevolt. And uh, I'll put a link up here if you haven't seen that particular video and you want to check it out. So when the folks at Acevolt reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in checking this one out, I thought, yeah, it's got some cool features, it's got a unique form factor, why not? So let's get this thing out of the box, see what it looks like. All right, one product manual and a warranty policy on the back, which says that it has a 24 month warranty. So that's cool. All right, here we've got an MC4 connector to a DC7909 or eight millimeter style connector. And then a, looks like a uh, 12 volt car adapter to a DC7909. And then something else here. Oh, okay. And then an AC cable. And then one external charge brick. Also with a DC7909 uh, barrel connector on it. So this appears to be a 200 watt AC adapter. So that's cool. All After giving this thing just a quick once over here, it looks like the power buttons are on the top and you activate the DC and USB ports here, the AC inverter part in the middle and the main power right over here. And by the way, if I haven't mentioned it yet, this is a pure sine wave inverter and it is an MPPT charge controller. And it does appear, based on what it says down here, that the DC input max is 200 watts. So that's kind of what I expected since this is a 200 watt AC adapter. So that's cool. 200 watts input for a mid-range, mid-capacity power station is actually very good. So there are four AC ports right here, two of which are three-prong and two of which are two-prong. And then you've got your uh, accessory, 12-volt accessory port, and then a couple of DC5521 ports, it looks like. Yeah, then behind here is where you charge it either from AC or via solar. So that looks like that's about all there is to it. Let's uh, power it up and just kind of see what it looks like. So a firm short press turns it on. If you hold it just a little bit longer, the front light comes on with the power. So I've got 67% there, nice little graphic. So it's a bicolor LED display. And then it's got some interesting accent lighting on either side, the Ace Volt logo is lit up. So let me go run this thing through its paces and find out what the usable capacity is, kind of what it can really handle, and uh, I'll report back. So, see you in a few seconds. And we're back. So it's been about a month since I uh, did the intro on this and I've been able to run this thing through a variety of tests and use it in some real world scenarios. And uh, let's kind of just talk about how all that went. So one of the first things I really want to know when I'm looking at a power station is what is the actual usable watt hour capacity, not just the rated watt hour capacity. And so I ran this thing through both a DC and an AC test, and I'll put some video up here of that. And you can see here on the DC discharge test, the final result uh, came in at about 576 watt hours. So it's rated for 672 watt hours. So if I divide those two numbers, I get about 86% efficient. And I use the word efficient because that's what everybody else uses. But really, I think it's the, the BMS in this case that is kind of limiting that. But that is actually pretty typical performance uh, or efficiency performance from a power station. So 86%, very respectable. But on the AC side, I got 580 watt hours, which was actually just a little bit more than what I got on the DC side. So that's actually still very, very good. Now when it comes to solar recharge times, I found a nice clear day. I started early in the morning after I had run this thing all the way down to zero and uh, hooked a 200 watt solar panel up to it. Again, I'll put some video up here and we'll see how that went. Make it out, I'm getting 132 watts. Pretty clear Sunday. Early in the morning, still after nine. We're basically starting from zero charge. Find out how long it takes to charge one of these uh, sort of mid-range capacity units with a 200 watt solar panel. All right, it's been two hours and the sun has moved a little bit to the right. It's a little more due south now than it was when we started. 
pulling in 145, 146 watts, and we are at 44%. So that's that's not bad, actually. So we're almost halfway charged after two hours. I actually lost some of my clips there showing the four hour and five hour results of that solar test. But basically I was at about 89% after four hours. I repositioned the solar panel and an hour later I was at 98%. Uh, and I had started to get some partly cloudy conditions. It wasn't quite so pristinely clear. But based on that testing, it's pretty clear that five hours of decent uh, sky conditions, decent sun conditions, it, with a 200 watt panel is enough to, to bring this thing back up to basically 100%. I think for, for most conditions, uh, 200 watts for a 700 watt hour-ish um, power station or, or smaller is actually a pretty decent number to go with. So you can recharge this thing in about half a day or roughly five hours. Now, another performance indicator that I like to test on power stations is what is the no load draw? So if I enable either the DC ports or the AC ports, how much does it drain your battery capacity over time? So by default, this thing has something called eco mode enabled. And if you're using that, if it gets uh, less than 10 Watts draw, out of the ports in over a four hour period, it will go ahead and power the unit down completely. And that's fine because it preserves battery life if you forget to shut the, uh, the ports off. But let's say you've got something with a very intermittent power draw or something that just draws very low power and you don't want it to shut off. Well, in that case, you need to disable the eco mode or turn that off and you can do that. And if you do that, after uh, 12 hours uh, with the AC inverter enabled with eco mode turned off, so again, you're preventing this thing from auto shutting off at that point. Um, I lost about 1.6% per hour, we'll call it, uh, on the AC with the AC inverter uh, enabled. And if I enabled just the DC ports and left that on with eco mode turned off, I only lost about 1% over a 12 hour period, which is pretty good. So being able to turn that eco mode on and off depending on your particular needs is actually pretty handy because some units don't give you that capability. They just do what they do and you have to live with it. Another interesting feature, at least from my perspective for this kind of unit, is that the form factor is very interesting. Um, it does allow you to kind of tuck this thing into a couple different places and still have access to the, the front ports, especially the AC ports, which tend to require a little bit more space or clearance in the front. Um, when, when the units are sort of wider with the ports on the front, which is a little more typical, if you plan on putting this sort of behind the front seat uh, or tucking this into a corner somewhere, I find that this particular form factor just gives you a little bit more flexibility and maybe how you want to store it in your car if that's where you happen to be using it. Now, I also did test this unit to make sure that the 12 volt port on here is regulated and it is, which means it'll maintain that uh, 12 volt plus voltage. It won't drop below 12 volts, even if the battery capacity is very low, which not all units are regulated. Um, Rock Pals is a notorious one without a regulated 12 volt. So I think a regulated 12 volt port is pretty important and something that you should definitely look for in a power station. Oh, and before I forget to mention it, Ace Volt did give me a promo code and I'll put that in the description below if you wanna go check that out. It does take about $30 off the price and I think that makes it just a little over $600 uh, in, in cost. So I think that price range for a power station in this particular capacity class and with a 700 watt inverter, is, uh, while it's not the deal of the century, it's a pretty fair price considering what you get. Now, another quick topic I wanted to cover because I've gotten a couple of comments on recent uh, power station videos about this, is what kind of devices can you run with a power station in this class? Now, and by this class, I mean the inverter handles 700 watts continuous up to 1400 watts peak, and it has a usable capacity of somewhere between 575 and 580 watt hours. So to know that, we need to know what the peak power draw of your device is, and we need to know what the continuous or average hourly power draw of your device is. And if we have that information, then we know whether or not this inverter can handle that device at startup. Refrigerators in particular have a noticeable peak when the compressor first kicks on, so you have to have a peak watt capacity that can accommodate that. Now at 1400 watts peak, this will run a full size refrigerator, but the question is for how long? and you're probably not gonna run it all that long with something that's under 600 watt hours of usable capacity. But some other common things you can definitely run with this. You could run an electric blanket, an AC electric blanket, kind of a standard full size or queen size. So for a typical electric blanket and a typical eight hours of sleep, if you're gonna use it continually, um, you could probably get about 50% of the capacity used after a normal night's sleep if you're running that electric blanket at say medium. And again, these are just ballparks because it depends on how 
how high you have the electric blanket turned on, which brand of electric blanket, all that kind of thing. So if you wanted to heat water with something like this, like an electric kettle or a coffee maker, as long as it's not drawing more than 700 watts continuous, you should be fine. Now the larger coffee makers, 12 and say 16 cups, those typically use about a thousand watts. So, um, and they use it for several minutes. And so that would probably trip the overcurrent protection on this and it will shut off. But a smaller coffee maker that makes say four to six cups should probably be no problem. The only way to really know that for sure is to get something like this. So this is a watt meter. This is a fairly inexpensive one and I'll put a link to this uh, from Amazon in the description below if you wanna check it out. This one is less than $15 does everything I needed to do. And what it what it's really handy for is not only allowing you to calculate your average watt draw over time. And as I mentioned, for things like refrigerators, that's very handy and important to know. And uh, then it also shows you what your continuous watt draw is. So you have a pretty good idea of what any particular device is gonna require in terms of power. So I highly recommend getting something like this, especially if you plan on running appliances and devices off a battery source like this. So noteworthy things that are not going to run on this class of a power station, full-size microwaves are not gonna run because they're gonna draw an excess of a thousand watts. Um, a, a hair dryer running on high with high heat, high fan, high heat is gonna probably draw somewhere between 1200 and 1500 watts. So again, that is gonna trip the overcurrent protection. Uh, an air fryer, definitely gonna be over a thousand watts. Something like an instant pot, uh, for example, is probably going to draw somewhere in the 800 to 1,000 watts, depending on the particular model. And again, that's that's going to be a problem for something in this size. So if those are things that you want to be able to run off battery power, you're going to be wanting an inverter that can handle at least 1,000 watts or more for those particular kinds of devices. So let's wrap up real quick here and just kind of run through the major pros and cons as I see them. So first of all, battery chemistry. The fact that this is lithium iron phosphate is definitely a pro. This particular unit is rated for 2500 plus full discharge charge cycles, at which point it should still have retained at least 80% of its original capacity. And after that, it doesn't become a paperweight. It's still completely usable. It's just that the battery capacity will continue to degrade over time. Now that said, the lifespan on a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, it, in this particular case, is gonna be five times of what you would expect to get out of a comparable unit with a different chemistry like uh, lithium NMC or nickel manganese cobalt. Now the fact that this unit has a 700 watt continuous uh, inverter capacity is very good. It's still, in, this is in the price range of something you would expect to be in more of the 500 watt capacity, but that extra 200 watts you're getting out of a 700 watt inverter just gives you that much more flexibility in the kinds of things that you can run with it. I like the fact that it's got the wireless phone charging right under the handle, and its form factor is just a little bit different than you would typically find. And that does give you a little bit more flexibility in where you can put it and use it. While the 200 watt DC input max is not earth shattering, it's certainly more than acceptable for something in this particular capacity class. Uh, that gives you the ability to use a single 200 watt panel and fully top this thing off from zero to 100% in just about five hours under pretty good sky conditions. And finally, the fact that I can turn off the eco mode if I have devices with very low power or intermittent power draw and keep the unit running under those conditions without it shutting off on me, I like having that flexibility and this unit does give you that. Now, as far as the cons go, there's really only a couple of items that I think are probably worth mentioning. There is no app support for this unit. Uh, that's becoming a more common feature among some of the other brands in the industry uh, to see that they have an Android app or iOS app where you can monitor the settings remotely or turn the uh, functionality on and off and that kind of a thing. Um, that is not available in this unit. Uh, so you kind of have to rely on the LED screen. And the LED screen does shut off pretty quickly. So if you want to re-enable the LED screen, you have to hit this button over here, which is kind of my second complaint. Uh, this button is a dual purpose button. If you just press it really quick, uh, it activates the display on the, on the LED display so you can see what's going on. Now it says if you hold it for one second, it will also activate the light on the front. Now I don't need to use the light as often as I want to see what's on the display. And what I find is that it doesn't take a full second of this button press in order to activate this light. So I'll show you what I mean. So I didn't really press it for a full second and now the light is on. If I didn't want the light on, I have to cycle through a variety of little modes here until it finally goes out. 
and then it finally goes off. The other way that I can turn it off is I can long press this button until the light goes off. Now the problem with that is if you long press this button over here, it actually turns off the AC and the DC stacks if they happen to be on, and that may not be what you want. But as I said, it's just kind of a minor nuisance to me, and it's not as big a deal once you kind of get used to how the buttons behave. Uh, you just kind of, you know, work with it. So the bottom line for me on the Aceful Camp Power 700 is I think it's a very solid unit. It's a solid choice in this particular capacity class. If you're in the market for something under that 1,000 uh, watt hour capacity and you want something that's got a reasonable amount of inverter capacity, so this thing gives you 700 watts, which is not bad at all. And by the way, this unit is not actually available on Amazon at this point. I'm not sure if it ever will be, maybe it will be, uh, but you have to get it through the acevolt.com website. So I'll put a link to that in the description below again if you're interested in checking that out. Anyway, I hope you found some of this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me that thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. And uh, I got some more power stations, solar panels and cool stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there. I do think that the DC 500 watt, no, no, that's not it. So like I said, I do find it from, at least from my perspective, to be a little bit of an a nuisance and a nuisance and a nuisance and a little bit of a little bit of a nuisance, a little bit of a nuisance. <laughs> I speak English.